Aquarii, Pisces, Welcome Cross Watchers, and Newcomers, one and all. Um, yeah, it's a general reading for Pisces. And <clears throat> we're closing out the month of September. We're in the Libra Mansion. We have, we're in the energy of the new moon with the solar eclipse coming up on October 2nd. Yeah. Um, for some of you, it may be the third. So I'll be offering that reading probably on the 1st of October and then the next day. I will do the October 2024 monthly Love Tarot Energy Update. So I just want to let you know what's coming. Um, yeah, please pardon what's going on here and i'm just coming through the tail end of all the drama surrounding hurricane helene so that started here in my region um, of the states and like i was telling aquarius from um you know tampa to atlanta and Asheville to nashville millions and millions of people have been um, affected with unimaginable loss so we should all be sending a collective um, shot of energy to all those affected. So I'm, I'm fine, but, you know, my daughter still can't get back to her property um, on the Barrier Islands. And so we do know that she didn't have water inundation because her, her unit is up, up a little higher. Uh, but the properties uh, beneath hers did suffer so she's got no power till they can get all the power sorted out dried out you know repaired below her uh, it's just been a hot mess so thanks for your patience and um it's just been super stressful so i'm coming in with um a message from the Divine Master's Oracle for you to kick off this reading. Let's see what's coming through. Ooh, Horus. Yes, manifestation vortex for you, Pisces. Belief makes manifest. Thoughts attract and create. Yes. In fact, it is the Eye of Horus that is my logo. Yes. So this is... Um, very powerful manifestation vortex for you and we do have the new moon which is in Libra and the solar eclipse sort of takes it all and amplifies it belief belief makes manifest thoughts attract and create mm -hmm. you gotta believe it you gotta see it believe it feel it it's all part of manifestation. I love that for you. Okay, and since we're coming off the full moon, what is what set in Pisces set this all in motion since that was a lunar eclipse? Um, yeah, here we go, right? I love this. This is a powerful new moon, and it sets in motion a six month. Uh, lunar cycle that's all focused on relationships right the new moon until the full moon in libra six months from now so it's all about relationships baby here we go this is a special spread i've been doing in case this is the first reading you've seen in this series you know i always close out with pisces uh so we're looking at um past relationships lessons from past relationships or maybe within the relationship you're here to watch about the baggage you may be carrying what you need to release what's blocking you um what you might need to forgive and self-love what you need to work on in specific all right so it's a totally new spread and i will walk you through it yeah your lesson yeah it's heavy you need to offload some stuff that you've been carrying around like an albatross around your neck. The baggage, what are you potentially carrying? Um, interesting. Six of wands. The lesson is that there's no way to, there's no um, middle ground. There's no way to make peace. There's no reconciliation. There's, um, interesting. Hmm. 
Release. Oof. Ace of Pentacles block. You've got a block around this, uh, something to do possibly with either wish fulfillment or complacency. What do you need to forgive? There's something that doesn't serve you anymore and you may have been holding on to it or not parting with it. You know how sometimes we hold on to stuff we're like, you know, bone collectors in a way. Um, that is an archetype. And yeah, there may be some things that you've really long ago needed to move on from and you haven't, so you need to forgive that. And self-love, yes. Ooh. There is a slice of happiness that belongs only to you, my friends. You are deserving and worthy of it. So let's jump in and do a little clarifying, shall we? Look at Ace of Pentacles again. Well, in order for said new beginning, we've got to, there's something that needs to be released, right? And the Ten of Wands is a card of release and offloading, right? Like, let it go, release it already. So we have two release cards here, but there's, there's some resistance. And I feel like that's a lesson for you with regard to past relationships. Um, maybe there's some, you have some difficulty, you have some resistance to releasing something and it maybe gets in, in the way, um, holds you back on some level, it becomes part of the problem because you are focused on this Ace of Pentacles, either an offer or a new beginning or an up-leveling of some sort within relationships. Could be this one in specific, but it, we're looking at past relationships and patterns. So I'm seeing something that's heavy. It has been costly to you energetically, um, but there's resistance in it. There's this thing where it becomes so burdensome, but the death card is coming from the bottom of the deck, right? So for those of you who are new or who have forgotten, when I'm pulling from the bottom of the deck, it's unconscious awareness or it's something that plays out behind the scenes. Either way, it's something you can't see. So it's not, you're not paying attention to it, or you're unaware of it on some level. But the death card usually is about release so that you can have the growth, change, and transformation that is needed to kind of grok the lesson. So we've got some baggage here in the form of the Six of Wands. What are you potentially carrying around from these relationships? <laughs> oh yeah, waiting and anticipating and sort of expecting some, some kind of a homecoming, a, a reconciliation. Right, so then you can move to calmer waters and get the peace of mind. So there is this refusal to let go that becomes very burdensome because you are in some sense anticipating, right? Look there, there, you can see it. I'm, I'm looking, I'm waiting. And even maybe sometimes expecting this, the new beginning. Right? For them to come in and to come back, to reconcile anything. So it becomes baggage because maybe the return doesn't happen. Um, maybe the recon reconciliation doesn't arrive. Because this can be a triumphant homecoming kind of a, a message, but it can also be where we make peace, where we reconcile, where we meet in the wit in the middle where we forge a win-win outcome but it seems like this is now baggage for you and of course it's tied into the lesson of the ten of wands it becomes unmanageable so the release is that ace of pentacles 
I might have said in the beginning, but I think I forgot. This is more of a shadow-ish kind of a spread. I know, not for the faint of heart. You can take it, Pisces. So let's see. Oof. Yeah, it has kind of eluded you. I feel almost as if there have been promises made that have not been kept. Promises made that have not been kept. And maybe on some level, you're kind of in this energy of, yeah, well, next time it's, I'm just gonna leap. I'm just gonna leap. And your message here is like, you gotta let this all go. Just release it. Do yourself a favor because it's becoming this repeating pattern. And so, and, and if it's not a repeating pattern, it's now built up within you that it's weighing you down. It's holding you down. And the block is that there's some complacency involved somewhere along the way. Someone that is not either taking the action or making the offer or doing the up leveling, whoever that is, it's probably not you, right? And so there's the absence of wish fulfillment, but it, it's, a, it's a block because you're still anticipating it. You're still waiting for it, even half expecting it. So you're being guided to release this. right? The unfulfilled wishes from the past, the disappointment, the mistakes of the past, the regrets of the past, the loss, the sadness, there it is, temperance, right? I went with the flow, I was cool, I was chill. I, you know, temperance is about patience and going with the flow and knowing that in time it all kind of comes back around, not always. It's been a source of conflict, so it's blocking you now. This, this patience, the temperance thing has led to, you know, okay, so for example, sometimes we understand that a person needs a wide berth. Like we gotta give them some space. They're dealing with something in their life and we sometimes need to kind of step to the side and give them space. That's, that's one thing, because it's a situational kind of a deal, right? And it's usually something pressing, you know, where there's some kind of loss, where there's some kind of stressful situation, or, you know, you know where, where I'm going here. But other times we're dealing with someone who that's, you know, or we're dealing with many people who the minute they say, well, you know, I need a little time, where that becomes the go-to. And the minute we hear them, we're like, oh yeah, sure, no, oh, no problem, I'm chill, I'm good, I'm okay, take your time. And so complacency becomes the block. And, and we don't realize that we've become habituated to a phrase. Yeah, I just need some time. Like really, I'm just, you know, I've got some this and that and whatever. And we're, 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 we're not giving a wide berth. We're not holding space. We're allowing excuses. And somebody becomes complacent because we've given them the space to be complacent. Yeah. So we're kind of like, now we're looking back, we've got this like, oh, why did I do that? And, and yet, you know, it's almost like we feel like it's too late. Well, you know, I'm just gonna wait for the energies to come back into flow and balance, but it's gnawing at us, it's conflict, it's tension inside, we're, you know, uh, it's eating us up. But it's like, no, it's okay, it's all good, it's all good. Yeah, it's good, it's fine. It's a block now because their complacency becomes our complacency. We don't know how to get out of the loop. 
I know what of I speak. I have been through this. And then one day I just said, oh, you know what? No, that is not working for me anymore. <laughs> and let me tell you, that was a quick conversation and the fastest end of a relationship in my life. I was like, you know what? Yeah, no, um, that's not working for me anymore. <laughs> I'm telling you this for a reason because you just kind of eventually the block, it's like it's right there in your face and you're like, yeah, nope. Mm -mm. Yeah, I don't think so. And it changes on a dime your whole worldview of the difference between giving space in a tense, you know, one-off situation, very situational, versus being taken advantage of for your kindness. Yeah. So let's see the forgiveness. What do you need to forgive? Not walking away from the person who's taking advantage of you, right? There you go. Not moving the heck on. When you see, you know, when it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck. It's duck. Move on. You see it. You know it. You're just choosing not to deal with it. Forgive yourself for not moving on when you recognized, right? Like game sees game. You know that saying? I don't really like that saying because it suggests that we got to have a little game. Of course you got to have a little game in you. You got to be able to say, you know what, I, was, I didn't just like crawl out. Like, I didn't just, what, fall off a turnip truck or something like that. Like I know what life's about. I see you. And that does not work for me. <laughs> That's exactly what I said. And it was the day that my Queen of Swords came from the top of the deck and said, yeah, that's not going to work for me. That was the conversation. It literally lasted like maybe, maybe 10 minutes, maybe eight. And then I picked up and moved on. So forgive yourself. Put her from the top of the deck from now on. Short, sweet, to the point. I didn't you know, raise my voice. I didn't get nasty. I didn't need to. I just changed the terms. Doesn't work for me. And the self-love then makes sense. Ah, I'm free. <laughs> right? Oh my gosh. Wow. Oof. Happy days. Yeah. And the reason why this is coming through for you with self-love is because the sun is our conscious awareness. It is, you know, shines the light on all things that are real. Um, and kind of helps dispel the illusions and the fantasy and the confusions, clears up all the emotional, well, you know, what, what is this and what is this not? And the Page of Wands here, I feel like it's kind of, you know, getting the spark back, getting a little joyful, finding the passion. I don't think it's a person. I think it's an energy. Right, so for you, self-love is about shining the Klieg lights there on all the little, you know, um, distractions and the places you got lost and confused and what, what's real versus what's fantasy versus illusion, delusion, and all the things, you know, all the little rabbit holes we go down and just sort of take baby steps and get back in the game of 
excitement and passion and enthusiasm for life, and it takes a little bit of work, right? On some level internally, you know, you're gonna have to give it some time, you know, it's gonna have to become a focus. Self-love is a, is a task and it takes your effort and your attention and your energy because you got some stuff that you have to sort out um, very consciously. And I love the page of wands there for you because it, it, you know, it talks about like a beginning level of evolution and like, yeah, I got to get excited again. I'm sort of getting out of this complacency bill and getting out of you know, um, anticipating something coming toward me that doesn't come because that's the baggage, that's the lesson. And I got to release it and I got to let it go. And I've got to stop being blocked by saying, yeah, it's all good, it's all good. You, you take, you know, I'm good, I'm good, I'm not good. It's not good. <laughs> it doesn't work for me anymore. Forgive it, release it, and move on. That is what I have for you for this part of the reading. The extended, I am going to look at the relationship you came here for, but I want to go a little more specifically. Your energy and your block in that specific relationship and their energy and their block. And then I'm going to look at the relationship dynamics and I'll also get divine guidance from you for spirit about just that relationship. This was kind of like a retrospective. I'll also get the outlook for that relationship going forward. So the links to that are below. You have option one, two, or three of how to access the extendeds. There's a monthly renewal. There's a one time or there is the all access pass. So check those out. Also, if you enjoyed this, got something really powerful from it, or you've been enjoying my readings and you have not yet done so, please do subscribe below and help me stay here on this platform. It's getting tougher these days, guys, so that I can continue to do what it is I love. That is the energetic exchange. I come here, I do the readings, you subscribe, and um, yeah, help me, help me bring these messages to people just like you who are looking for that kind of assistance. Got it? Thank you. All right, I'm heading to the extended, so I'll see you there in a second. Bye for now.